And they are praying constantly now. I get messages on my phone praying for you. So, so it's a blessing to be here. I consider it an honour and a privilege. So this morning I want to uh, talk to you about a word called influence. We've been talking about spiritual leadership in our class and we looked at many definitions of leadership. Different people have different definitions. But the constant word through all those definitions was the word influence. And it means a person who does good to somebody else. You can influence people for bad, but we want to talk about influencing the world for Christ influencing our neighbours, influencing our family. In a sense, every one of us are leaders because you can't have the spirit of God inside you and not be an influencer. You've got the spirit of influence himself living within you. So we are chosen and called to be people who affect the lives of others. We improve the lives of others. Um, we influence for the kingdom. So we add value to our neighbour. We, uh, we, we refresh, we encourage, we strengthen the faith of others. There's something in us that has a heart to bless someone else, no matter who they are. You might not be the senior pastor of a church now, but right now you have to learn how to influence, how to bless and how to encourage others. Because when you're a senior pastor and you're the leader of the Bible school, and are you going to learn how to do that then? You need to learn how to do it now. Right now, prepare, start sowing. We influence others by our attitude. We can be really negative and grumpy and horrible and we can influence others to be the same. If we have an attitude that is hope-filled, a heart of love and joy because you know Jesus Christ, you can change the atmosphere of where you are. You can turn the tide. You can improve the situation. I believe God has asked us all to improve where we are. Because if we're going to be a leader in times to come, how can we improve suddenly, suddenly develop the gift of improving? We need to learn it right now every day. You know, if we draw near to God daily, and we drink deep from that living water that he pours into our heart. And if we devour the word of God and chew on it on a daily basis, it renews our minds. We become different people. We suddenly have new glasses. We see differently. We see who needs help. We see who we can bless. We don't look at life from what can I get out of it? What are they going to give me? What instead you get this other vision that says, how can I bless that person? How can I encourage that person? How can I improve? You can start with your friends. You can start with the people here in Bible school. Make their life easier somehow. Serve them and bless them. So an influencer is usually someone who's filled with the Spirit of God. They have been drinking at the well. They have been seeking the Lord and just love him. And they are looking for opportunities to touch someone else's life and to make their burden be lifted. We influence things by how we approach our work. We can change a person's mind by how we do our work. I worked in the Royal Brisbane Hospital years ago with another friend and she was newly saved and filled with the Spirit and she was so on fire for God. She was a nurse in the hospital with me and one night I was working in a 
very serious ward, a ward where, with a lot of people with serious illnesses. And I had my patient to look after, she had her patient to look after, and her patient was very sick. Many tubes, many tubes, intravenous therapies, lots of things. So she was working very hard. But the way she did her work was absolutely impressive. She had such love for her patient. She had such desire to make the patient comfortable. She did it with diligence. She had joy. She was so willing to help. I was watching her and thinking, this is beautiful. She influenced me in my nursing career for years after that. I remembered how she did things and that's how I endeavoured to do things. On that same night, two registered nurses, the bosses, peeped around and they watched her and I heard them saying, have a look at this. And they sat there and they watched this girl do her work with such joy and such care for the patient. She was recommended to be made the nurse of the year in the Royal Brisbane Hospital. We influence by our attitude. We influence by, if we're grumpy, I don't want to do that. The same old work, I don't want to do that. It's not good. Bless the Lord, you put people off. Oh my soul. Yes, bless the Lord, oh my soul. <laughs> so, influences, influence others because they're alive in the spirit, they've got a great relationship with the Lord and they want to go out and just change their work. Some other friends and I used to pray together in the mornings and we would pray all the way in the car to work and then we'd get into the hospital and we'd say, God, what are you wanting us to do today? So we had many opportunities to express the kingdom in our workplace. You know, influencing, sometimes you don't even know you are influencing someone. I know of a pastor in America who had a lovely family and he had a small church and he decided, he felt the Lord tell him to a, um, take a foster child in. And the foster child is somebody who has not got a home and the government puts them in homes um, for a period of time. And they put a, a young boy who was 13 into this man's home. And it was only for a year. And the pastor just was himself. He, uh, tried to encourage the boy. Um, he, the boy didn't speak much. He was quiet. He was well behaved. At the end of the year, he left. And the pastor thought to himself, I don't know whether I will do that again because he couldn't see a lot of fruit from it, so he didn't. 30 years later, he got a letter from that boy who was now a man of 43. And he wrote the letter and in the letter he said, Dear Pastor, I apologise that I haven't told you what's happened in my life. But while I lived with you, I found Jesus as my personal saviour. And when I watched your life, how you loved your wife and how you loved your children, I vowed that that's what I wanted to be. He said, I have been a pastor now for many years with a family. So he had, just by his example, the boy was in the house and he saw his love for his wife and his love for his children and his honouring of God and he vowed that he, that was what he wanted to be. So this pastor saw the fruit eventually. He didn't realise it at the time. Sometimes just living your life before God, someone else can see it, notice it and be inspired. So I believe every one of you can live an inspiring life just by being in the spirit and wanting to have a heart to bless and connect with others. We had a lady in our church who was getting, we had known her for many years. She had been a teacher, she was a very good teacher and now she was much older and we didn't know that she, she had sicknesses that she didn't tell us about, but 
um, we didn't know that she wasn't able to look after her house very well anymore and things were in a terrible mess and very dirty and we didn't know that because she never invited us to her house. But one day she had to go on a holiday with her sister and one of the ladies in our church went to her house to look after it while she was away. And when she saw the house, she thought, oh God. So she started to clean and sort things and improve it. She was wanting to improve the situation for our sister. Then she told a couple of other ladies in the church who also went around there and started cleaning and sweeping and washing and, wall and doing walls and windows. And then a couple of men in our church went around to fix the door handles, the broken windows, all sorts of things. So this first lady had actually made a team of people who were going to make a difference, were going to improve somebody's life. There are many thousands of ways of making a person's life better. So when this lady came home, she was so excited. She was so excited. It was a wonderful time in our church because I was thrilled that all these people would serve and look after her, her interests. She had looked after many people's interests in the past, so now people were taking an interest in her. So if you're filled with the Spirit, you are a, a potential influencer. It means that your mindset doesn't mean, I want what I want for me. It means, I want to bless someone else. Sometimes if we're miserable and life is boring, put different glasses on and look at people and think, how can I bless that person? How can I encourage them? If you have a brother in, in the classes who's struggling, give him some time, help him to get through something. It's, you start now at being the person that you want to be if you're going to be in a leadership role in times to come. You may not, you may go out into the workplace, but you can transform your workplace. You can transform, you can change it, but you've got fire in you. And you sometimes don't have to say a word. You don't have to say anything, but people, they smell something different about you. Something that's good, something that's helpful. Start the habit of making a difference right now. Don't put it off, don't put it off. You know, God never puts you in leadership and usually unless he has trained you and developed you and brought you in. Yes, you can have a lot of knowledge, but you need to have a Christ-like attitude to the people of, around you. Start with what you've got where you are. I remember I went to America once to visit a church and they put me in a house with a lady who was struggling to get all of her house duties done. And she was struggling because her husband wasn't a Christian and she just needed support, she needed somebody to pray with her and I did that. But I noticed one day her floor, she, she was, it, it was really dirty and she was wanting to get to it. So I put my hand up and I said, look, I will wash your floor for you. So I got on my knees and I'm swapping on her floor, you know, not knowing that she would go back to the pastor and tell the pastor and the pastor's wife asked me the following year to run a women's conference. Well, I'd never ever done such a thing in my life. I was shocked. But sometimes you don't know what door you will open just because you have done a little tiny act of service because you have considered someone else other than you. Putting your hands up. My pastor's wife, many years ago, I went to, to, do, to learn or study midwifery and it meant that I was living in nurses' quarters and you had your own room. And she said to me, as I was taking my case out on the way down to the hospital where the nurses' quarters were, were the last thing she said to me was, Gwen, don't get down there and be selfish. And I thought, hmm. So I went down and I'm sitting in my room, I unpacked this stuff and I'm sitting there and I thought, God, how do I be unselfish here? 
what can I do for anybody here? And there was a missionary magazine sitting on the desk. I opened up the missionary magazine and there were six people in it that I wrote letters to. How can I be of help? How can I pray for you? Well, because of that act, um, I have been to Bangladesh, Thailand, South Korea, Africa and many countries purely because I sat down and wrote those letters. I had no idea that I would be invited to those countries and had opportunities to minister, share and to go from there. Many of those um, missionaries came back to visit us. We then supported them for many years. We built a hospital in South India. We've just finished building a bar. All of this came out of my pastor's wife said, don't be selfish. I had no idea that over 10, 20, 30 years, the seed that was sowed would bring so much fruit. You've got no idea where God will take you if you learn the art of unselfishness and looking to the needs of others. Let me tell you, it will open doors for you that many other situations won't. So I challenge you today to be faithful in little things. If you can't help and bless where you are, I can't see you being a great worship leader or a great senior pastor because you won't know how, because you won't have the habit, you won't have the inclination to bless development now. You'll develop the faithfulness that God is looking for. Those small things lead us on to much better things. I challenge you today to stay filled with the Spirit and have the right glasses on. When you get up in the morning, read your word, wash your brain with the word of God and then have the heart and the eyes that Jesus had when he walked through the earth. And look, little things, do not say to yourself, it's too small for me to do. Somebody else can do that. Remember Jesus washed, we've been talking about, Jesus washed the dirty feet of his disciples. And he was the King of kings and Lord of lords. So I commit that to you today. I trust you will learn the secret. I thank God for people who prompted me to learn that secret. My friend who nursed beautifully, my pastor's wife who said, don't be selfish, and many other things along the way. Thank you for having me here today.